UA community, Fit Body Forever and Fit Body Bootcamp communities. What's up, everybody? Welcome back. Robert Linkle. I am coming to you live from the road. I'm down here at Fit Body Bootcamp headquarters in Chino Hills, just right down the road. Uh, hotel room for um, the uh, 2024 September workshop that we're doing here uh, with our Fit Body Forever new coaches and franchisees that are starting up their program. So we spend in the next couple of days with them, but we got a new article here from our good friends over at Silver Sneakers. We want to go through this real quick. Quick shout out and reminder to the TOA workshop 2024 is going to be in uh, Rancho Cordova, Sacramento, California on November 9th. We would love to have you there with us live in person. We are over half sold on our seats in house. So I think we have 20, six seats that are available or no 26 seats sold uh, for our in-house and then all the online folks that we can get check the link in the description below if you want to sign up get your ceus with us and uh, spend a day learning great fall prevention power training all kinds of great stuff for our older populations all right let's get into this new article just came out the other day the five best exercises to target your underarm jiggle okay Elizabeth Millard. I've reviewed Elizabeth's stuff before and have not been disappointed. Most of the time, the stuff she puts out is very good. Um, this one, not, not thrilled uh, with it. And it's, you know, again, it's a year old, so I understand. But um, first things first is you can't reduce underarm jiggle by simply lifting weights. Uh, it's a huge help. It is absolutely a huge help. And the stronger you get your arms and the more musculature that you can build in your arms, the better. Okay. I'm a huge fan of that. Build all the muscle you can. I'll tell you, number one, when people hold their arm up and they wiggle it back and forth, any, any muscle that's not contracted, if you jiggle it, it's going to flop around. Okay. But when you tighten your arm and then jump up and down, anything that jiggles now, as Arnold famously said, if you flex and you jump and you jiggle, that's fat. So that fat is then basically adjusted via your body composition, meaning caloric deficit, cardiovascular training, burning off that fat to then meet the muscles that you're building up. You lose some body fat, you increase some muscle mass, you've got some nice toned arms, okay? This can be done for anybody and everybody. It just depends on how hard you work and how hard you're committed to this, etc. If you have had, say, excessive weight gain in the past, You've been very, very large and you've shrunk down. Sometimes skin can be overly stretched. And when you're much smaller, no matter what you do, body fat wise, you'll just have some extra skin. This does happen to a lot of folks. Uh, that's, that's just the way it is, unfortunately. Unless you do some type of surgical intervention, not a ton will change that. So kind of keep that in mind too. By all means, I would rather you be less body fat with some extra skin than to fill it up, okay? We, we definitely don't want that. The less body fat on you, the better within reason, okay? All right, so she talks in here again, just basically what we just talked about. So hitting that point home is you can't just, you know, train your way into the perfect arms. Um, <clears throat> the, the emphasis and suggestion to always go talk to your doctor before you exercise, this is only if you have health concerns, right? If you are a healthy, functional individual, going into lift weights is not gonna be a life-threatening situation for you. But if you have any underlying health concerns, yes, consult your doctor before you get started. The big things that we are addressing here, osteoporosis, for sure, bone softening, oste osteopenia, softening of bone, osteoporosis, brittleness of the bone, and arthritis, and or osteoarthritis. Osteoarthritis and arthritis. Arthritis is a response of typically in the joints that starts to articulate pain, things start to wear away, it hurts then to manipulate your fingers, your hands, move your wrists, move your elbows, your shoulders because you have arthritis in them. Well, you have an arthritic response with osteoporosis, that's osteoarthritis or a combo of those. If you have sarcopenia, osteopenia, and arthritis, that's kind of a combo of a variation of the big three. You throw obesity in there too. You've got the big three plus, big four if you want. These are all big concerns for us as we age. Understand though, if you have arthritis, you've got arthritis. Can you make your quality of life better with arthritis? Yes. Can you make it worse? Yes. If you use it, meaning 
biceps, triceps, what we're going to talk about today, and it triggers an arthritic response. Even if it's just a little one, keep going. If it's a huge response, you did way too much, you got to tape it back a little bit. But to say, oh, I flared up my arthritis, I'm not going to do this, is in my opinion, again, if you don't have any major medical conditions underneath, two-thirds of our population has arthritis, so it, it is okay, and there's plenty of research to support training with arthritis is actually a good thing. There's just this grace period, and this can be anywhere from 2 to 12 weeks, okay? So we're talking two weeks to three months, where your body has to adapt to the idea that I'm going to resistance train and do these ranges of motion with weight in hand, and your body will adapt. It won't have such a huge response, and in some cases, it actually gets better. But in 97% of the cases, it did not get worse, okay? The other three, it just it just didn't do anything. The other 97, it got better. So definitely talk to Doc. All right, here's here's my first point of contention, and I think I hit this almost every time in the in these articles. You need space to move, yes. Comfortable clothing, absolutely. A flat bench and a sturdy chair to support you if you need help to support, and yes, something to kneel on one up. Water to sip, yep, as needed. Hand weights, optional. We're doing resistance training. You're doing an arm circuit. Why is that optional? Why do, why do you even put that on there? This is, again, feeding that stereotype that weights are bad. We, we've got these exercises that are going to help you fix your underarm jiggle, apparently. But the weights are optional? So am I just going to move my arm back and forth? Is that going to... Is that going to fix me? Is that going to get rid of my other arm jiggle? I, I could do a trillion reps of just moving my arm up and down, and all I'm going to get is arthritis or bursitis in that joint. So that right there, just get rid of optional. It's You have to have the weights, man. You have to have weights. That's the whole point of overload training. You have to have load to overload it with. Again, just one of these like, why do you even put that in there? Just be done with the stereotype, Okay. Two to three days a week, non-consecutive days, all good. Don't speed through it. Take your time, all good. Engage your core, support your spine, all good. Rest 30 seconds, go to the next one, all fine. Okay, I'm good with all that. All right, exercise, and here we go, choosing weights uh, that are heavy enough to challenge the muscle for a full set without breaking good form. Agreed. If you struggle to complete the set, try a lighter weight. No. If you struggle to complete the set, great job. Great job. That's what we wanted. We wanted you to struggle. That's the overload that your body needs to eventually adapt to not make it a struggle anymore. But if you do the set of 8 to 12 reps or whatever they're going to suggest, and it wasn't a struggle, it's not going to make you any better. It has to be a struggle. That's, that's the whole point of this. Your body will, there's something called the said principle, specific adaptation to an imposed demand. What is the imposed demand? The weights in hand. As I curl or tricep extend or whatever we're doing, and I work my way through, if I get towards the end of the set and I'm struggling, okay, it's hard to finish it, but I finish it, my body has just now uh, applied an imposed demand. Arms, you better get stronger because this thing that we just did right here, where we pushed ourselves and our arms are all swollen now, and that kind of burned, didn't hurt, but it burned, discomfort, we're going to do that on a regular basis. So you better adapt. Specific adaptation. So what does the muscle do? It goes, okay, we've got one binding site right now between these two muscles. Let's throw in another binding site since you're going to be doing this more often. And it's a struggle. And so you start to do that and then it builds another binding site. And then you continue to do your curls and your triceps and it's a struggle, it's a struggle, it's a struggle. Binding, 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 binding. This does not necessarily mean you're getting bigger. Think of it this way. You're shaking hands with somebody, okay? You can either shake hands with the other hand, and now I have two hands that are shaking, or I could squeeze that first hand tighter. There are different ways to train where you still get stronger and you either build more muscle binding sites or firmer binding sites, more engaging binding sites. And that's where a load that will give you eight to 10, maybe 12 reps, that's a challenge, but it's not near impossible, right? that will give you a stronger, firmer handshake, but not necessarily make your muscles grow big. You're not gonna get beefy. Trust, okay? You are not going to get beefy. Uh, do the movements without weight, your muscles will still get a good workout. That's not true. That is 100% not true. You could be completely deconditioned unless you have just woken up from a coma. Moving your body weight, 
like this is going to do nothing for you other than stop traffic. <laughs> like that's the, This is going to do nothing for you. There is no imposed demand. Zero. You move your arms all the time. Your body's so used to it. You have to have weights. Scratch that out of this. You have to have weights. All right. Exercise number one. I saw this coming. Tricep kickback. Not a fan of this lift. You have to be in a hinge. You have to have your elbow high. Your elbow has to stay right there to do this extension and return. And there's just not enough stretch for the tricep really there unless you're in the perfect position, which this image shows. And when she does it in the video, she crushes it. It is very good. It's a great example of how to do it. Most people don't do it like that. They drop their elbow. It gets in line with their spine, maybe even a little bit lower. And it's just not high quality reps. Okay. But this is, this is fine. So I'll, I'll, okay, we'll go with that. Bicep curl. Love. Palms up, supinated grip. We're going to kind of maximize your bicep. I like to pull my shoulders back a little bit and try to basically, like if you had a towel under your armpit, kind of squeeze your elbows down. I might like that. Squeeze the elbows down like you're holding that towel. And if I were standing behind you trying to pull that towel out of your armpit, you would, oh, no, no, I want to squeeze that, not let go of it, and then do your curls. That'll keep your elbows right where you want. Ideal. Bicep curl, great one. Okay. A shoulder raise. I don't know, honestly, I don't know what scaption means. Um, I, I think that means that you're going to have scapular retraction, meaning you're pulling your shoulders back, but that's the first on me. Notice she's doing what's called a full cup, okay? There's empty cup where you, you pronate your hands, turn them down, and there's neutral, okay, like a pronated grip, and there's thumbs up, neutral grip, okay, that or full cup. That's probably the most comfortable position for your shoulders, and I love a good shoulder raise. Pro tip would be when you bring your arms down, don't go all the way down to zero at your side. Stop about 15 degrees short and work that top like 85% of your range of motion. Because when you get to the bottom, that bottom 15%, mostly what you're moving it with are your, your traps to try to get it into position and then the delts take over. It's better to just keep it all deltoid. Just work the top 85% if you can. And whatever hand position is good for you, totally great. I do like that they showed a lateral raise and not a front raise. We do front raises and anterior delt work so much. I think the posterior delt is the number one address. So if she were in a hinge, then doing that range, that would be, that'd be the best. But this is the second best. So I'll take it. This is a good one. Okay. The bent over row. We call a hinged row because I don't like using that word bent over because it encourages people to round their backs. But basically get into a hinge, row, return, row, return. Lat, rhomboid, posterior delt, bicep, all good muscles to help your arms, but also help your posture. So I'm good with all four. First one's a little shaky, but I'm good with all four. Here's where you lose me. The row to a kickback. We already did the row and we already did the kickback. So why are we doing this again? You know, not, I'm, I, again, you could just be like, they just wanted to put something else in there. We could have put some other good stuff in here, right? You didn't do anything that was chest-based, so why not a push-up? Why not a narrow grip bench press? Why not diamond push-ups? If we're trying to target the arms and we want to get some good tricep work, diamond push-ups on your countertop smokes your arms, destroys your triceps in a good way. Those are damn hard, really hard. It's almost all tricep. And you get to get a good little pectoral pump while you're doing it. I, I like that. We did a back dominant row with more bicep work, so why not do some push-ups or a bench press? and get some tricep work along with that. I think that would have been a much better number five. We already did rows and you already did kickbacks. So now you're gonna mix them together. So I'm nowhere near my maximal ability to row because I know I'm gonna to have to kick it back. So I, if I'm rowing 30s, I can't kick back a 30, so I've gotta use a 15. Well, now when I do the row, it's kind of pointless because 15 is way too light. All I'm doing is going, well, this is the most I can do this kickback with, so I'm gonna do that. Also, you're using momentum from the row into the kickback, so you're not even getting just the pure focus of a lift that we already know is really difficult to just do outright perfect without adding something else to it. So number five, complete scratch on my, on my end, in my opinion. I would just go with a, truly I would go with a uh, bench press, either a narrow grip bench press, like a thumbs up grip, neutral grip bench press, or a compression close or diamond push-ups would be my favorite to really smoke those arms and just get you feeling good, good, good. Now, also like with the kickback, if you're like, well, what's better? Overhead tricep extensions. This is one of my faves. And if you can do overheads, let's say your shoulder hurts or your neck is an issue, get on your bands and do a push down. Okay. The overhead stretch that you get of the long head of the tricep when it's overhead is ideal. 
But if you can't do that, any other tricep extension kicking down towards the floor is, is really, really good too. And you get to work, <clears throat> excuse me, you get to work both arms at the same time. So it's a little more time efficient than my right arm kick back and then my left arm position so hard, etc. I think that should be a pretty good uh, alternative in there for you. So, all right, we've got some type of overhead tricep or tricep kick down, <clears throat> our new number one, bicep curls, lateral shoulder raises, hinged rows, bent over row, hinged row. And then the last one, <clears throat> I would rather do your bench press, diamond push up, etc. something along those lines rather than that complex. All, overall, Elizabeth Miller, you always put out really great stuff. Thank you. Please continue the good work. You're definitely helping. And all these little critiques on little things here and there, just quit putting weights optional. If I could just send you one message, stop putting weights optional. They got to lift weights. If there's any demographic out there that absolutely needs load, it's the older population. Increase bone density, build muscle mass, improve their posture, keep them powerful, keep them upright. Prevention of falls, increase longevity, quality of life, sleep, cognition, etc. Load is a must. All right, gang. Have a great day. Much appreciation to all of you. Please subscribe, like, don't miss any of the videos that we put out. And until next time, as always, please continue to fight your good fight against sarcopenia. Take care.